For today's lesson, we introduce you to Dr. Whistlepuff, who will be teaching you about climate change and how it's affecting our local marine mammal life. Um, hello, D Dr. Whistlepuff? Dr. Whistlepuff? Oh, 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 hello! Why, I was so busy tracking the latest data we got in on our sea lion patients, I didn't even realize you were there. Now... What is it I'm supposed to be doing? Climate change, Dr. Whistlepuff. You were going to teach us about climate change. Ah, yes. Climate change. One of my favorite topics to teach. Yo. Oh. Uh, oh, dear. Hmm. Well, go ahead, Mr. Narrator. Are you going to start the projector or what? Oh, <clears throat> yes. Well, uh, sorry, Doctor. Here you go. Huh. So... Climate change. What is it? Well, climate change, sometimes referred to as global warming, refers to the rise in average surface temperatures on Earth. 97% of climate scientists agree that climate change is due primarily to the human use of fossil fuels. The burning of fuels like coal, oil, and gas is causing an increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This in turn traps the heat of the planet like a blanket, causing the oceans, land, and atmosphere to warm. The science is clear that the climate is getting warmer at a faster pace than ever before in history. The largest remaining unknown is the rate at which people continue to use fossil fuels and release carbon dioxide into the air. Oh, now, Dr. Whistlepuff, how can you be so sure this rise in temperature is because of humans? Well, while some quantities of these gases are naturally occurring, Earth's CO2 levels didn't rise above 300 parts per million between the start of human civilization, roughly 10,000 years ago, and 1900. Today, it is at about 400 parts per million, a level not reached in more than 400,000 years. In any case, scientists and economists agree that reducing fossil fuel emissions would be far less expensive than the consequences of not doing so. Now, may I please continue? Oh, yes, of course. But, Dr. Whistlepuff, what are the effects of climate change? I was just getting to that. The effects of climate change are varied. We are seeing warming air, land, and water temperatures, melting glaciers and polar ice caps, and rising sea levels. We're also seeing extreme weather events, which means we might not see more frequent storms, but the storms we do see will potentially be much more fierce. Oh, and not all areas will experience the same changes. Some places might see more rain or snow, while others will get hotter and drier. But, as a biologist, I am most interested in how these changes are affecting our marine mammals. Let's take a look at our local California sea lions. Warming water temperatures mean that in places, the Pacific Ocean is around 2 to 5 degrees warmer than normal. Think, the ocean has a fever. And in areas where water is already warm, we're starting to see bigger changes. And you see, some fish don't really like the warm water, and in response are diving deeper to find that colder water. The sea lions, in turn, have to spend more time swimming to find food and are not able to nurse their pups to a healthy weight. And young sea lions are not strong enough to dive deeper to look for food. The result is they're going hungry. If the current course of climate change continues as is, this is what we'll see more and more. And sea lion pups are showing up in all sorts of odd places looking for food. The Marine Mammal Center even rescued a starving sea lion pup on the streets of San Francisco. And that's all just because of warming ocean temperatures. Because of rising sea levels, the amount of space on many breeding beaches is shrinking. But Dr. Whistlepuff, is there anything we can do to help protect marine mammals or to combat climate change? Why, I was just getting to that. Oh, oh, oh good grief. The screen has a mind of its own. Well, as I was about to say, there are lots of ways for us to take action and reduce our global footprint. Hmm. Well, so, it's true. The global footprint has greatly expanded over the last century. But there's a lot we can do to protect marine mammals, the oceans, and ourselves for generations to come.
Here at the Marine Mammal Center, for example, we're using solar panels over animals' pens, which not only helps offset the use of fossil fuels, but saves us money, too. We're composting unused fish and food to reduce the amount of methane released from organic products and landfill. And we're incorporating climate change education into our program. Oh, look, that's me! <laughs> but here's what you can do. We all know that we've contributed to our current situation. So, our first order of business is to reduce our use of fossil fuels. One way to do this is by looking at alternative energy sources, such as solar and wind. Even easier, reduce and reuse. Plastic is made of oil, so every time we can cut our use of plastic by bringing our own bags and bottles, we save fossil fuels. And finally, drive less. Around 30% of our CO2 comes from vehicles, so use public transit, carpool, bike, or walk. Or choose a fuel-efficient vehicle for your next car. If we all pitch in and take action, we not only reduce our carbon footprint, but help keep our ocean and marine mammals healthy and happy. Thank <laughs> you.